Welcome back, it's time to start coding for real now. And in this video, we're going to set up our plugins and config Gatsby to work the way we want. First of all, if you had any trouble installing different plugins and that, you can always use the files in the step solutions from the starter files directory. So up until now, if you use the files from the folder that says before video four, you will have everything that we've done so far. You can try to just navigate into that folder and do a npm install and then run it from there and see if it works for you. Otherwise, it may be some trouble with your node setup or anything that's specific to your system. You always have the starter files with the code that we've done so far if you run into any trouble. And also for this course, I've set up two different URLs with the Tango site because we're going to need the URLs and grab the WordPress data. So one is on tango.startlearningreact.com and the other one is at tango.webenfalk.com. They're completely identical, so you can use which URL you want. And I'm probably also going to show you in the end of this course how you can set up a local WordPress server on your own computer and I will provide the complete WordPress installation for you to use on that local server if you prefer that one instead. With that said, we're going to start doing some coding here. We've got our Gatsby site, our starter files running now, so make sure that you have everything up and running. And inside the project that we created, we're going to edit the file gatsby-config.js for this video. And this is the file where we set up all the plugins that we installed before. So if we first take a look at the file, how it looks by default, this is all the things that Gatsby set up for us automatically when we installed our project. First of all, this is just a regular JavaScript object where you can config everything for your Gatsby project. And as you can see here, it has some default values inside here. So first of all, we have something that's called site metadata. And this is the title, description, and the author of the site. So we can change these ones if we want to do that. For example, we can call this Tango Brand Alliance. And the description, it's a really long one here. We'll do it like this instead. And we can write something here. Maybe this is Tango Brand Alliance site. That's enough for now. You can write whatever you want here. And author, Weyman Falk. Of course, you can use your own name there also. This will be available for us in the GraphQL data that we can query from our pages and components in Gatsby. So we can always grab the title, description, and the author if we want to use them in our components. All right, and then we have some default plugins that's installed for us. We have something that's called Gatsby plugin React Helmet. And if we look this up on the Gatsby page, we can read about Helmet that this is something we can use for SEO and to inject metadata in our header on our different pages. We're not going to dwell into this in this course because I will focus on the technical parts, how you code your site and not how we optimize it for SEO. So we're not going to use React Helmet actually on every page. You can look this up in the docs at gatsbyjs.org. And as I said, it's a really good documentation in here. So you'll find everything you want to know. And this is of course important when you actually deploy your site and make it go live. And then we have something that's called Gatsby source file system. And what this will do here, it's we're just setting a path to our images. As you can see, you can configure a plugin like this with another object inside here that has its own properties. So for this one, it has some options and we call it a name images. And then we set our path where we want our images to go. And that's inside the source images inside here in source. And we have a folder called images. And this is default for Gatsby. So it will set this up for us. You can of course change this if you want, but I don't recommend it for this course as I'll be using the default path for this one. And then we have two plugins here that's called Gatsby Transformer Sharp and Gatsby Plugin Sharp. And these ones are for the images. And we're going to come back to this when we want to import an image into our component. I'll explain these ones later on. But for now, you can just know that these ones will help us to transform the images and make 
different images for different sizes of the screen or resolution. So we always get an optimized image for a site and uh, of course make it load faster that way. And then we have something that's called Gatsby Plugin Manifest. And this one is used for progressive uh, web applications if you want your user to add an icon to their home screen on their device. We're not going to use this one here as I'm not going to go through this in this course. So you have to look this one up also. And lastly, there's one that's coming out here and that's Gatsby Plugin Offline. You can use this uh, when you want your site to be available offline and it will create a service worker for you. This one is used in combination with this Gatsby plugin manifest. So as I said, you can read everything about it at gatsbyjs.org site. They'll explain it in detail here, both the Gatsby plugin manifest and Gatsby plugin offline. Okay, that's our default plugins that was installed for us. We're going to add our own plugins now that we installed in our project. First of all, we have our plugin for WordPress that's called Gatsby Source WordPress. And we can put it maybe somewhere below here after the Gatsby plugin manifest. In this case, we're going to create a new object because we're going to set up individual settings for this plugin. So we need an object for it. And then we have a property that's called result. And inside here, we just name our Gatsby source WordPress. That's the name of our plugin. So now we're telling Gatsby to use this plugin that we installed. And now we're going to apply some options to it. So we have a property called options. We create a new object inside of that options. And we have some few options we're going to create here. First of all, we're going to exclude some routes when we import all the data from our WordPress file because we don't need every route. It will throw an error at us if we're, for example, importing some routes that you need to be logged in to get some data. And we don't need to be logged in to grab any data on this site in this course because we're just using the kind of uh, public data for this one. So we can do that with a property that's called excluded routes. Like so. And then we have a bracket. And inside here, we just specify our routes. And these are our specific routes for the WordPress API. So this one will tell Gatsby source WordPress to not import anything that has something to do with our users in the WordPress installation. We can do like this so we get more space. And then we have another route we don't want to include, and that's slash WP slash version two settings, because we're not going to need any settings for this one. And we can just apply an asterisk here, like so. And this will make sure that we don't include these routes in our import. And then we have something that's called base URL, and that's simply the site we're going to use. So you can choose one of the two URLs I showed you earlier. So I'm going to choose tango.startlearningreact.com. Then we have our protocol. In this case, it's HTTP. It could be HTTPS, so we could have a secure protocol and then you specify it here. We have one that's called hosting wp.com. And this one is for if you're hosting your site on the wordpress.com, as it says here. This one is false because we have our own domain here. Use ACF. And this one is the popular plugin that's called Advanced Custom Fields. I'm using this one in this WordPress installation. So we have to set this to true. And this will include all the data when we import from the Advanced Customs field also. Then we have a long one here, search and replace content, content URLs, URLs, yeah, a really long one. Make sure you spell that right. Search and replace content URLs. Yeah, I think I spelled it correctly. And inside here we have the source URL. That's going to be HTTP colon slash slash tango dot start learning react dot com and we have a replacement URL 
like so. We set that to an empty string. So what this will do is it will check every link we have and see if we have somewhere included this one in our links at our WordPress site, and we can replace this one in that case. And we are just going to set this one to an empty string because it will add our domain automatically. So we don't want this one as we're not going to use this domain anywhere in our Gatsby project. That'll make sure for us that we're not going to link anywhere to this site from our newly created frontend in Gatsby. All right, it's telling me to have commas there. It's my linting that kicks in here, so we can just auto-format it. This will, of course, depend on what linting you are using. I'm using West Boss linting in this one, so, so far it's working. I think it's actually good. So we're going to use another plugin that's called Gatsby-Plugin-Style-Components. And of course, this is the one for the style components that we installed also. And we have the last one here, and that's the one for the Google Fonts. So we create a new object, and inside we have another result and our plugin name, and that's Gatsby-Plugin-Prefetch Google-Fonts, like so. We have some options for this one also inside another object. So we select the fonts we want to use, and in this particular case, we want to use a font that's called Tico or Teco. I don't know, Teco maybe. So we select the family of Teco, and we want to use the different variants. 200, 400, 500, 600, and lastly, 700. I don't know exactly if I'm using all of these, but it's better to have them here so we can use them if we want. I think that's all, actually. So we set up all the plugins here, so now our Gatsby project knows that we want to use these plugins when we compile the site. So we can save this one and just do a quick check here if it compiles. So we write npm. I can make this a little bigger for you. npm run start. Actually, it hasn't grabbed the data for us. We have some error here. Cannot read property replace of undefined. So we have to check our Gatsby source WordPress. Yeah, and I know what's wrong now. I have misspelled this one. There shouldn't be capital letters. They should be base URL like this. And we can save it and try to run it again. Yeah, it's working. So it's fetching everything now from that specific URL we specified in the plugin. And that's great. We now know that we're fetching data and our projects are working. We are grabbing the WordPress data into our Gatsby installation. And of course, Nothing will have changed here because we haven't done any coding with the components yet. But we have our data in our kind of local database for Gatsby that we can grab with GraphQL data. I just want to show you also before I end this video what we have to do with the WordPress installation to get this up and running because there is some plugin that you need to get the API to work correctly. This is a Swedish version here, so maybe you don't understand this. I'm inside the plugin menu of WordPress. So first of all, I've installed a plugin that's called ACF to REST API. And this one is for the advanced customs field to be available in the WordPress uh, API. So this is a really important one. And then I have another one that's called WP REST API menus. And this one is for the menus here in WordPress to be available also in our API. So these two are really important to install, but you don't of course have to think anything about this because I've done this in the installations, but I just want to show you this if you have some own WordPress site that you want to convert to using Gatsby for the front end. So you have to install these two plugins to get it to work. Otherwise you won't get the menus and you won't get the advanced custom fields. So with that said, this is the end of this video and I see you in the next one.